Today I'm reviewing Learning Go by John Bodner. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall, and I'm always asked, what book should I buy to learn Go? And I don't know the answer, so I'm trying to find the answer. I recently bought six books on Amazon.com all about learning Go. Now, they're all published within the last year to year and a half. Hopefully, they'll be reasonably up to date that way. And they're all targeting beginners of the Go language. So there's nothing here about advanced techniques or anything like that. These are all about learning Go. And I'm reviewing them one by one. My goal is to find the best book that you can read to learn Go in 2023. And so I'm doing the hard work for you. Let's dive in. So this is the third book uh, in my series. If you haven't seen the other two videos, uh, I'll have a link in the description to the playlist. You can watch all of those. Um, and be sure to subscribe so you can see the other videos as they come out and my final conclusions at the end of the series. So this is my first book by a publisher I already know well. It's published by O'Reilly. I learned to program largely uh, reading O'Reilly books. I remember reading Learning Pearl back in 2006, probably. Um, and I've read other books by them, many other books by them. So I was fairly comfortable with this with this uh, publisher. And this book didn't disappoint. But let's start with who this book is intended for. From the preface of the book, uh, we, we learned that this book is targeted at developers who are looking to pick up a second or fifth language. The focus is on people who are new to Go. So that suggests to me that this book is intended for, for experienced developers. Um, so far, every book is claimed uh, to be for somebody with at least a little bit of programming experience. This one mentions a second or fifth language. So I think this is a little bit more targeted to an experienced developer. Uh, and my reading of the book would suggest the same. Now, what I really want to emphasize, though, uh, and something this book emphasizes, even in the um, subtitle, the subtitle is An Idiomatic Approach to Real-World Go Programming. Uh, and so the, the book talks about in the opening, it says that uh, this book is really about writing idiomatic Go. So it's not just about learning the mechanics, it's about learning to write Go the Go way, which I, I think is useful. So all that said, if you are brand new to programming, you've never learned to program at all, or maybe you just learned a little bit of JavaScript or something, this book might be a little bit advanced for you, um, depending on how hard you want to try to, to understand things. But if you're already a professional developer, this is probably a good book for you. Um, I still haven't read the others, so I, I can't give it the the recommendation yet, but uh, stay tuned and we'll find out where it ranks with the others. Let's talk about narration style. So um, I've always been a fan of O'Reilly books. I just mentioned that. I've read many of them before. Uh, of course, they have many different authors, and every author still has his own tone, his own voice, or, or her own style of, of writing. But the, the fact that it, it's a, a common publisher uh, with their own standards uh, really made this book feel comfortable in a way that some of the others weren't. Um, there's no gimmicks about, you know, easy steps or for dummies or whatever that, that sort of maybe get in the way, if, if you will. And I, I really feel like the author and, of course, the editorial staff at O'Reilly have done a great job of writing a book that's easy to read. It's direct without being dry and dull. As I read this book, I am struck by how accurate the, the, the claim in the uh, preface is when it says this isn't just about learning Go, it's about writing idiomatic Go. Uh, I see that theme throughout the book. Um, he consistently points out the quote more correct or less correct ways of doing things. If there's if there's two or three ways to do something, he'll 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 lay them out for you and then explain that this is the better way and here's why. So I, I appreciate that. Now talking about content because that's really the main thing we're here for, right? Uh, I'm impressed at how thorough this book is uh, in the topics of Go. Uh, the last two books I I reviewed uh, so far um, have had huge swaths of missing information. Uh, this one, I don't really feel that way. In fact, if, if anything, I could maybe fault this book at being too detailed in some cases. Uh, it spends two full pages talking about complex 64 and complex 8 types, which almost nobody uses. Um, I, I've never used them. I've been pro programming in Go for eight years. I've never used the complex types. Um, now, if you're in a certain uh, area, I'm sure there are people who use them daily. Uh, the point is, it's a fairly obscure uh, feature of the language. And this book spends two pages on it. So you can't fault it for missing details. This book also does a good job of pointing out some of the common gotchas. Um, uh, the last two books I read uh, leave plenty of room for gotchas, and I can imagine the readers of those books coming on Stack Overflow asking for help. Uh, here, here's an example. Uh, on page 32, the book says, Another Go requirement is that every declared local variable must be read. It is a compile time error to declare a local variable and not read its value. I have seen this question asked so often on Stack Overflow, and this book makes a point to point out 
uh, the, the the issue, and so that it won't it won't trip you up. Now, one really common problem when writing technical documentation is a sort of chicken and egg problem, where you need to explain something to the reader before they understand the context around it. Now, this book does a pretty good job of of addressing this, and in, in I think my preferred way, which is that it will introduce a topic, but just enough for the current topic at hand. And then it points you to the, uh, the next chapter or the, or the next section of the book that goes into detail. So for example, if it's talking about strings and bytes, um, you know, maybe it's describing strings and it needs to mention bytes because they're related. It will say, now bytes are this related in this way. For more information on bytes, go read chapter 12 or whatever the chapter is. So it does a pretty good job of staying basic uh, to what you, to the context you already have at the correct moment, but pointing you to the greater detail when you need it. And finally, in my view, this book does cover all of the vital topics, including Go modules, including how to write tests, and even generics. And that's that's a, a feat because this book came out before generics did. <laughs> uh, of course, at the time generics came out, uh, it had been in planning for, for months, a year, longer. Uh, so there, there's plenty of information about generics before uh, the book came out. Um, so the author did a great job of writing a chapter about generics. And he says at the beginning, this isn't a feature yet, but it will be. And of course, now here we are in the future and it is a feature uh, and it's an important one. So if you're learning Go uh, and you want to learn about generics, this book has you covered. And and maybe just an aside, uh, I've actually learned some things from this book, uh, which I wasn't expecting to learn new things about Go while reading beginner's books. But this one actually had some new uh, tidbits in there that I didn't know. So um, Kudos to, to uh, Mr. John Bodner for writing a book that could teach an eight-year-old Go veteran some new things. Let me talk about accuracy because I think that's also important in all of these books. Um, the good news is I haven't found any accuracy problems in this book. The only exceptions would be some things that are outdated. And honestly, I'm amazed. This book even has notes in it telling us that certain things are outdated and will be updated in an upcoming release. And, and of course, the way they do that is they've, they've had this book published more than once. It's still the first edition, but they've added a few little uh, notes uh, occasionally when they, whenever they print a new version, they add a few notes on some pages that say, this paragraph is outdated, uh, check for a new version. So I, I'm impressed. I'm honestly impressed by that. So physically, this book is exactly what you would expect from an O'Reilly book. If you've read one, it's, on, it's black and white on stark white paper. Uh, there's a few little graphics for icons and things like that. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's just text. Um, the code samples are, are in a monotype font, easy to read, uh, no complaints about the physical structure here. What's my conclusion? Um, you can probably tell already, I like this book, I'm a fan. Um, I, I can't give it my final uh, recommendation yet because I haven't read all the other books. But so far, this is easily the best of the three I've read so far, with three more still to go. The only reason I would suggest not reading this book if you're trying to learn Go so far uh, is if you're an absolute beginner to programming. Uh, some of this book will probably be a little bit over your head. Um, that's not to say you can't do it if you're ambitious, uh, but if you're looking for an easy introduction to programming, this probably isn't that book. But let's let's stick it out until I finish all six books and I'll give my final recommendations. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you learned something today, hit like, and I will see you at my next video.